do so. Uh, but we are glad again that you're here. It's always a great opportunity uh, to be able to coach, to be able to watch our young people grow up. I see it from di many different ways. I see it as a bus driver. I see it uh, as one that cleans up after them. I see it as a coach. Uh, I see it in many different ways. And I'm really thrilled with our students. I'm thrilled with uh, just what they've accomplished. And I'm uh, just so thankful for each and every one of our young people. You know, it's at this time that we have uh, three seniors. I want my three senior girls, if you'd come up, each one of you at this time, if you'd come up here and stand right here, okay? Stand right here. I'm going to have Mr. Fitch come. He has a couple of things to read, and I have a couple of things to give you as uh, he reads kind of a bio of each of you, and I'll probably add to it, all right? My wife's request is if you take photos, please send them to the school for the yearbook. All right. <clears throat> the first senior we would like to introduce to you this evening is Cherokee Lofino, the daughter of Carla Lofino. <clears throat> Cherokee has attended FCS for 13 years. This was Cherokee's first year to play on the varsity girls basketball team. When asked for a favorite passage of scripture, Cherokee shared Philippians 4.13. This verse reminds her of the strength she has through Christ that enables her to face the circumstances of life. Cherokee has learned a couple of valuable lessons through the playing of basketball. One is the importance of teamwork, and the second lesson is not to be afraid to venture out and do something new. A favorite memory was during a scrimmage where she guarded only Emily and was able to block her. Okay, right, that's Cherokee. <laughs> Lily Rusi is our next senior. She is the daughter of Barry Bennett and Stephen Mendy Williams. <clears throat> <clears throat> Lily has been enrolled in FCS for the past 12 years. During her time at Fayette Christian, she has played basketball one year. Psalm 32.8 has been a very encouraging verse for Lily in dealing with the present and in looking to the future. The verse states, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. From her experience playing basketball this year, Lily learned the importance of listening to all the new information she was given and then trying her hardest to execute it. Lily says she will miss all the fun times with her friends and that her favorite memory is winning games at the Milford Tournament. Our final senior is Stephanie Stallings. Stephanie is the daughter of Charles and Susan Stallings. <clears throat> Stephanie joined the student body of Fayette Christian as a junior. This is her second year on the basketball team. Stephanie's favorite verse of scripture is Psalm 37, 4, which reads, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. An important lesson that Stephanie learned is that it is important to help the younger players by encouraging them and not discouraging them. Ste Stephanie's favorite memories include the bus rides home, Megan's comments on the bench, I'd like to know about that, uh, the practices, and trying to find open restaurants after games. <laughs> All right, let's give our seniors a round of applause. I want you to stay up here because I've got some certificates for you. Um, as they come in as seniors, uh, they didn't get a lot of starting time, okay? So they were on the bench a lot, they were learning a lot, and uh, I got a couple of things to say, but they get a participation award, and the first one is Cherokee, and with that, I give um, kind of, the kids call it funny awards, but this is award, when I think of Cherokee, I think of a girl that um, has this certificate, the most missed practices, so <laughs> Cherokee gets the most missed practices. Mm -hmm. Then Lily Rusi. Lily was kind of, uh, she was there, a calming influence in a lot of ways, uh, willing to do anything. First time, 
out and she says, oh, I can't, I can't, and, but she would try. And uh, I appreciated that very much. But she also was that that looked around. She was kind of, and this is the certificate, the mother of the team award. Mother of the team award. And then Stephanie. There is so much I could say with Stephanie. She played last year, and when she was coming up, this girl just liked to have fun. You know, most go, oh, we lost, we lost, we lost. You know, and she's happy. You know, and it's like, okay, where are we going to go eat? Oh, the restaurants are closed. And it's like, okay, I like that energy. Um, but as, as, as we get through, we're doing some drills. And one of the drills is this drop step drill under the, under the basketball. And, and Stephanie just gets it and does it right every time. And Coach Schaefer says, she can do it. You know, like, oh, so, Stephanie, you get um, the Best Drop Step Award. Okay. All right. Let's give these girls another round of applause. All right, thank you, girls. As we, we had two teams, we had a junior high team and we had a varsity team. The junior high team, we had one game and lost in that game when we went down. But it's, it's, we really have a good, solid team. And I really enjoyed our junior high girls. Uh, they practiced a lot against the varsity and really did very well. I'm very, very encouraged about what these uh, girls are going to do as they grow through the program and uh, just not to quit. So I have a couple of awards for them. There's a participation award that each one of them get uh, as a junior high, but also I have another award that uh, just kind of um, capsulizes, I think, the year. First, Emily Stallings. Emily, would you come up? Emily, I give you a break a leg award. And if you didn't know that, she, in one of the practices, that girl stepped our leg and she had a hard time. Thank you. Our next one is Scarlett. Scarlett Cockrell, would you come? Uh, Scarlett is this fireball, and she's not afraid of anything. She got the I'm Not Afraid to Shoot award, and trust me, she's not afraid to shoot. Even if it's not open, I'm going to shoot. And uh, so, but she did a lot this year, learned a lot, and we were privileged to have her. Then Luisa Epifano. Luisa, would you come? Uh, Luisa is just a joy. She was my point uh, for the junior high team. She uh, has the knowledge of the game and does very well. And uh, she is that person that you can't really get. She doesn't get down. She is that encourager. Uh, she gets frustrated, but she doesn't get down. And uh, so you have my encourager award. All right, Gabby, Gabby, where's Gabby? Gabby, I could say a lot about Gabby. Gabby um, had a love-hate relationship with practices. She loved to come, she hated to practice. <laughs> um, but uh, Gabby tried, and Gabby did a lot there. But one of the things she came to practice one day, and, and I looked down, and, and most times, what do you wear, what shoes do you wear? Usually sneakers, you wear basketball shoes. She came and you have I Love My Crocs award. Okay. <laughs> Kezia, Kezia. Kezia Nepp uh, just is a powerhouse underneath. She's going to be a good, good basketball player. Um, she is going to be a teacher too. Because when we get back into... Um, uh, and get around, and all the girls come up, she's ready saying, we need to do this, we need to do this. Whoa, wait, stop. But she knows, and, uh, but she doesn't quit. She keeps going, at, you get the No Quitter Award. No Quitter Award. <laughs> and then Macy, where's Macy? Macy, Macy Willis, uh, another little guard that, uh, that can shoot, can run, uh, very active, and uh, she just, she just, she just keeps going. So I give you the Mighty Might Award, Mighty Might Award. Good job. And then Jenna DeRose, but Jenna's not here this evening, I don't think. 
and uh, Jenna was a joy in, in so many ways, but uh, Jenna got uh, Put My Head Down and Go Award, because it didn't matter where she was, she put her head down and went, doesn't matter where it was, so she got that award. So let's give the junior high a round of applause, appreciate them so very much. All right, with my varsity girls, um, I enjoyed this team. This, this team had a lot, a lot, and has a lot of potential. We realize we don't, we don't have a starting um, a senior, so uh, these girls are coming back. They're playing. I've enjoyed them, and I just appreciate all that they do. And, and one of the true joys is, is seeing someone, no matter what the difficulty, they continue. No matter what the difficulty, they don't quit in adversity. And I'm not talking about just in game situations, but in practice. Uh, this girl is an inspiration to me. Uh, as we would go to other ball games, I'd have coaches ask me about this person. And uh, she never wanted to go in. If I'd say, all right, go in, and she, I just for a minute, I'll just go in for a minute. And, but she never gave up. So Megan Sheeter, would you come up here? Uh, you get a participation award and a never quit award. Then, then we go to uh, several of um, our starters and some of the things that uh, our starters would do. I have an award for each one of them. And um, because in our games, if you looked at a lot of what they did, um, we had um, very close people score in the games. Uh, they had 49 points, 42, 27, 39 points, 9 points. That was with all those girls. So it was hard to pick because they, all of them would score it sometimes. All of them would do uh, a good job. And I, I guess that my most improved player would get a bar this year is Riley Toole. So Riley, would you come up? And Riley gets the most improved award she really has. Uh, and I give her, this is her bar, and she gets, um, I can't shoot the ball. If you've been at any of our games, I would yell from the bench, shoot the ball! And, and no, she got no. And finally she shot, finally she had nine points this whole year. So that was thrilling. So let's give Riley a round of applause. Thank you, Riley. Our next one is best offensive player. Um, and she gets my award of quiet but deadly, and that's McKenna Granger. So, McKenna, would you come up? Quiet but deadly. Then this next player is just, um, she's a leader on the team. She, she's my best defensive player. But you talk about intense. Um, she is very, very intense. And uh, she puts her head down and runs people over. Um, this is my best defensive player. And I'm giving her, I will knock you down award. And she did several times. Emily Barker, did you come? Next is really one of our most valuable players just for her intensity on the floor. Um, she would come back to uh, the huddle and she would go, come on girls, let's go. And that's the award. Come on girls, let's go uh, to this person is our most valuable player and that's Letitia Nett. And last but not least, I was trying to think, well, yeah, this girl could be so good. And um, she gets to the brink of greatness. <laughs> she does. She gets right to the brink. And then they pushed me. 
Oh, they pushed me, Pastor. They pushed me. I'm going to go get them. And then she's out of control. And uh, so I had to give her my coach's award. So, Kaylin Crichton, you get uh, my coach's award and my award, they pushed me award. Just um, as I finish up, one of the things that I, I do appreciate about the girls is their heart. Um, I appreciate you parents. Uh, I appreciate you driving, you coming to ball games. Uh, I, I appreciate your attitudes most of the time. I, 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 appreciate, I appreciate what you do, and I appreciate uh, Nick and Randy and all that they do. Uh, it's opened up, really, a lot of our programs as they put it online and people watch and, and people talk about our program and they talk about uh, how good things are. And, and you know, that's not just one person, that's all of you. And, and you do that so that these young people will get uh, the discipline that they need uh, for the most part. And I just appreciate you. I appreciate uh, each one of our parents. I appreciate those that do so many things behind the scenes. So uh, I just thank you for that and, and praise you for that. You have some good girls and look forward to next year and what the Lord's going to provide. Um, the whole basketball team um, would like to give you a card and thank just you. thank you for all the time you sacrificed for us. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, this has certainly been a year like no other year. I've been coaching just a couple of years, but um, I've never been, been through a year like this. And to be quite honest, I hope we never have another year like this. Uh, we started out with the 21-22 game schedule and end up playing 11 games. I think Mr. Fitch averaged about five revisions of our schedule every month. So I think it was about 20 altogether. I would get one, he'd come in the next day, give me another revision, this has changed or that has changed. So it's been, uh, it's been difficult. The good thing, I didn't get a technical file this year. So. Amen. <laughs> as long as we stay away from Bell Prix, I think I'll be all right. Yeah. Um, it takes a lot of people and their cooperation to have a program of any kind, but especially basketball because it's such a long season. We start in November, we end either in February or March, and the circumstances that we ended this, this year, like I said, it's been been very unusual right Noah so I want to thank a few people first your parents I really enjoyed working with your your young men it is uh, truly my privilege uh, I can't say that I always enjoy working with them but in the end and, and that's that's one of our team verses I'm sure I could call on any one of them and they could say it uh, and be not weary and well doing for in due season you're going to reap if you faint not and I truly know that sometime in the future, it may be a week, it may be a year, some guys it takes 15 years, but it will pay off uh, what you learn from going through the program. So I'd like to thank you parents. The ladies, Mrs. Bumpus, my wife, who else helped, Mrs. Ivy, uh, decorating the table and getting set up. And then last but certainly not least, my son and his wife uh, doing this. I know it's a lot of work and time on his part. This is supposed to be one of his days off, and I appreciate, and uh, I hope he has some leftovers so that we can take home. <laughs> Coaches, Mr. Vic Pontius and Noah stand up there, helped us, so I appreciate these two guys very much. Nick and Randy, Randy as always, I've been working with Randy a lot of years, and he does a tremendous job, and then He's got a sidekick there, and once in a while they use pastor. So I appreciate what you guys have done very much. Uh, Mrs. Sharon Miller, who is now our secretary, I think she does a little bit of everything in the office. But I pre any time I ask her to do something, she's more than willing to do it, and I appreciate that. And then Mr. and Mrs. Fitch, I really uh, 
appreciate Mr. Fitch especially because he's our AD, he's our principal, and he does a lot of things. And always very willing to help. Sometimes a little slow, but he gets the job done. And his wife's in there taking tickets, so I appreciate the hard work that they put in. And Pastor Garen, never a dull moment when you're around Pastor. He's like the little Energizer Bunny. So appreciate him too. And then, of course, my wife, who uh, we've been together quite a while doing this. So I appreciate all the help that you people give me over the years. All right, let me introduce some players here and people that are part of the team. Miss Allie Barker, come on up here. She keeps our scorebook, both for me and for Pastor. Does a tremendous job. If Coach Pontius puts the names down, she erases them all because it's not neat enough. So we, we appreciate you very much, young lady. So thank you. And then our ball boy. Come on up here, Micah. I can't wait till this young man's old enough to play. He does a good job for us. Thank you. All right, we started out with 11 players this year. We were going to try to have a junior high and a high school schedule. Uh, had good intentions, but um, some way along the line, it uh, sort of faltered. We, we lost one player. Uh, then with sickness and uh, the pandemic, uh, we lost quite a few games. Um, but I'm going to introduce these young men, starting with the youngest. Okay, Luke Granger is in sixth grade, first year playing. He'll get a certificate there, Coach. You have him right there. They should be in order. Just stay up there. There you go. JP Jake Crichton, seventh grade. Did a tremendous job for us, looking for what this young man's going to do in the future. He was not real shy about shooting, was he? <laughs> but he made good choices. Cade Whitaker, seventh grade. Brady Bumpus. Brady will get a bar. He got his letter and pen last year, so he'll get a bar this year. He's in ninth grade. Gage McDaniel, ninth grade. Toby Butcher, 10th grade. Where's Toby? There he is. I said this last year, but I'll say it again. This, this boy can fall down and get up quicker than anybody I've ever seen. It could be a backward roll, it could be a front, forward roll, but he is quick at getting up. Tenth grader, Nate Crichton. These guys look good with their bow ties and ties. Drew Pontius. Tenth grade. We have four 10th graders. And Justin Wines. And last, but certainly not least, our one junior, Xander Ivey. The good thing about this year, if there was much good about it, is that none of these guys are seniors. I feel real bad for these teams that had seniors and and uh, to have a season like this uh, with all the missed games uh, would be difficult. Because of being a senior, it's uh, very special. We have some special awards. Okay, Coach is going to give his first for the junior high. You got him, Mayor? Couple thoughts. Uh, they say time flies when you're having fun. 
And um, I must be having a lot of fun because this is the fifth year I've been working with what's now the varsity team. Uh, two years ago, you may remember, they were 15 and 2, and they won the state junior high championship. Last year, they were 17 and 0, and uh, we did not participate in the state championship tournament. This year, they were the number one seed in the state tournament. Our season was cut short by the pandemic. Like Coach said, not, none of them are seniors, and we're looking forward to watching them play next year. To help me get through till November, I have these little videos in my head, and I wanted to share them with you. Maybe you can get through till November, too. The first one I have is of Xander coming from nowhere, stealing the ball, flying down the court and making a layup on the left side. And the next one I have is of Nate. He's open for a long shot. He kind of lines it up and swishes it. Justin gets the ball inside. They think they're going to block his shot. He does this little fake, remember that? And they jump by, and he turns around and makes it. Drew comes in from the left side, puts it up with his left hand. He makes it, gets fouled, swishes the free throw. And um, Brady is on the wing, and the guy is guarding him way too close. And Brady takes off around him and makes a layup. I remember Brady in particular, and during one game, I'm not sure who we played, but he was in front of our bench. He had the ball, and the guy guarding him was way too close. And about everybody on the bench said, drive on him, Brady. And he did, and made the nice layup. Little videos I have that kind of keep me going until uh, November. I know the team has really improved a lot over those years. Um, I think this is one of Coach Schaefer's best coaching years. I didn't get to see all those years, of course, but he really helped this team. They've improved a lot. I have one little story for you. <clears throat> we watched um, Ross County play in our tournament. They played uh, Wayside, and Ross County had a boy that got 19 offensive rebounds. Every time the shot went up, he got the rebound and put it in. Coach says, he can't get 19 rebounds if we're going to win this tournament. If he gets more than two rebounds, you're going to be running. <laughs> I told Drew, block him out as best you can, but get ready to run. Because <laughs> there's no way you can hold a kid from more, less than two rebounds or two rebounds only. They, I don't know, <laughs> everybody on that team was looking to block that kid out. I, and um, we won the game easily. Middle of the third quarter, he had one offensive rebound. <laughs> so they didn't have to run. <laughs> I think that's really motivating your kids to get them to think about what they need to do to win the game. And there's nobody better at it than that, than this boy, this guy here. I am very proud, in all seriousness aside, that I was able to keep Coach Schaefer out of foul trouble this yeah, year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the awards for the junior high team, we didn't get to play very many games, and I feel bad for that. Uh, but when they did play, they played pretty well. Um, I want to tell you, we had two boys I thought really improved a lot. Um, one guy went from a grade school player to a junior high player, and that's Luke. Probably the one player that brings more smiles when he scores than anybody I know is our best offensive player, that's Jake. A player that went from a good junior high player to a player who could be put in the varsity games. Most improved player. He had some injuries this year. He fought through them. That's Cade Whitaker. Thanks, 
Coach's Award. His player is the fastest kid on the team, and he goes that speed all the time. Uh, I've never seen him loaf down the floor. He zooms down the floor. Uh, takes coaching very well, always tries to do what you want him to do, hustles, tries hard. Coach's Award would be Gage. I'm looking forward to next year, having, uh, helping Xander have a good senior season. Thank you. All right, our special awards for the uh, varsity guys, we had primarily five, five guys that played the, uh, most of the games this year. So most steals. This young man has an uncanny ability to anticipate and take the ball away from the opponents. Now, I'm not going to talk about what he does with after the, he steals it, but he is tremendous in steals. He had 44 steals in 11 games, which is pretty impressive. Okay, so Xander gets our award for... Take those glasses out to read it. <laughs> Our most improved player for the varsity to go from primarily junior high, ninth grade, and taking over the responsibilities on the point, both offensively and defensively, is a difficult task. But this young man, Nate Crichton, did a tremendous job of, of doing that and especially a position that has a lot of, a lot of pressure with it. So he gets our most, in, most improved player. Also, we had stats, thanks to my wife, I tabulate them the next day, but the stats for all 11 games that we played, uh, how many shots they took, how many they made, three-point, two-point, foul shots, rebounds, offense and defense, steals, uh, turnovers, and then the total points that they had. So they have the stats for each one of those games, and if they want to double-check them and see if I made mistakes, which is good possibility, then they, they're welcome to do that. The highest field goal percentage, this young man shot 46 for 50 for 82. 46 out of 82 for 56.1%, which is anytime you're above 50%, that's good. Justin Wines. <laughs> Highest foul shooting percentage. This young man made 24 out of 34, and he had 70.6%. Drew Pontius. Most rebounds is Brady Bumpus, 75 rebounds. That's 6.8 per game. And then most points scored, same young man. Brady Bumpus, he had 153 points for a 13.9 average. I want why don't you guys come up here and line up on this? Okay. I want everybody to see you. I'm going to offer these guys a challenge for next year. Everyone I'm coming back. And I really believe that a couple of the younger players are going to, going to improve between now and next year. So this is a challenge I have for them. Uh, and I hope they will accept it and try to do it. Foul shooting percentage. I just told you what Drew's was. His is 70.6. But as a team, our foul shooting percentage was 52.6%, which is not very good. Okay? So our goal, my goal for them next year is to shoot 70% as a team. Okay? Three-point shooting. 
They say that if you shoot 50%, and our team shooting percentage for two point was over 50%. If you shoot 50% from two point range, you've got to shoot at least 33% to equal the same number of points. So our goal, my goal for them is to shoot 38% from three point range. Defensive intensity. If any of you saw the Milford game down there and you saw this young man, number two, Robbie Johnson, get 10 threes and four twos and scored 39 points. Remember what Coach Pontius told you about the rebounds from Ross County? If that young man gets in double figures next year and we played him, we played him three times this year. If he, gets in, if he gets in double figures next year when we play them, they won't, they won't be in real good shape when they get home. <laughs> okay, so that's their challenge, is to improve on our defensive intensity. Okay? They need to be more aggressive. Aggressiveness means the disposition to dominate. So these guys better dominate little Robbie Johnson next year. Um, they got to understand that you don't get better just because you get older. A lot of people, it takes work, okay? And I don't know where I saw this, but it's 10 words, 20 letters, and I told these guys this before. If it is to be, it's up to me. And that's true with these guys. If they're going to accomplish these goals, which they're very capable of, then it's up to each one of them to do what they can to be the best player that they possibly can. I'm not saying live and die basketball, but there's a lot of things you can do to become a little better. So that's my challenge to them, and I hope they accept it and work hard. You got anything else, Coach? Gentlemen, I do thank you, and look forward to next year. I hope you are too. So. Some great things could happen. We didn't get a chance to play in the state this year, which we were seeded number one. And I don't know what would have happened. I know that Dayton Temple has a very good team. You saw what they did to Milford. Uh, and I think we're capable of doing the same thing defensively. Okay? So parents and players, I thank you very much. It's been an unusual year, but still rewarding. So thank you guys. Just before Mr. Fitch comes, um, one of the closing remarks I have is I want to thank uh, Michael Granger. He ran our clock. Uh, he helped me coach in the last few games. And uh, so, Michael Granger, thank you so much and just appreciate his willingness to come. He, he's come to practices. He's done a lot of things, and I want to see more of that <laughs> and, and a lot more of that. But I appreciate Michael Granger very much and just, again, appreciate you. Mr. Fitch. I, too, would like to express my appreciation tonight to our coaches. Um, you're aware, but I'd like to remind us that they give, they don't get paid for what they do. Uh, they volunteer their time. They spend time away from family and other responsibilities and opportunities uh, because they love the Lord, first of all, and they love your sons and daughters, and they love the sport, and they put all that together and they give their best uh, every practice, every game. Uh, and I just want to let them know that I appreciate their willingness to give freely of their time and their energy, uh, their expertise uh, to better our program and to better our young people. So if the coaches would come, I just want to give them a card. Appreciation. The Coach Garen, Coach Pontius, and Coach Schaefer. <laughs> a little slow. <laughs> Y'all didn't know he was a comedian, right? <laughs> Let's give him a round of applause. All right, this time I have Xander come. He's going to close us in a word of prayer. Let's stand.
Shelly, thank you again for coming. Appreciate you uh, coming out this evening. And may the Lord bless you as you go. Xander, come lead us in a closing word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you that we're able to come together tonight and uh, be here together and get our awards and help us to uh, drive home safely tonight and have a good rest of our evening. Your precious most holy name, amen. Yep. And before we leave, tonight is Brady's birthday.